everyone. It's Crystal Jordan, your relationship editor right here for Rolling Out. And this is another edition of Reality Check. Now, today we are talking about love and relationships, which I know you guys love this content because we get such high ratings when we do it. And of course, today's guest is a purveyor of this content. He is the relationship whisperer. In the studio with me today is Lateris Whitfield from Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Welcome to Rolling oh, Out. Thank you. Thank you. I love purveyor. I like that. Yeah. I'm going to use that. Yeah, uh -huh. That's yeah, nice. Yeah. I feel like you're a part of this conversation that we see on social media. Yeah. Right? Your podcast was really, you know, kind of started during the pandemic when yeah. people were all sitting down and we were all looking and trying to figure out what was wrong with our relationship or <laughs> yeah. why weren't we in a relationship. And so um, you're definitely one of the people that I think a lot of people look to to have an insight on this relationship conversation. Yeah, and I started out just like that, just trying to figure it out myself. Mm -hmm. And so I first felt like I had to create a platform where I was giving people you know, five steps of getting the man you want, seven steps of uh, becoming the man that you, all that stuff. And I said, right. I don't know the answer to this. So I said, <laughs> I'm going to try to figure it out. And so that's what I did. I just became a student of this thing and just mm -hmm. sat and learned. Okay. Now, I love the fact that you mentioned that you're a student because there are so many. I'm not going to call any names, <laughs> but we know there are uh -huh. a lot of relationship experts that have, as gurus. of recent, gurus, yeah, we're gonna say that gurus. has of recent been caught up <laughs> doing things that were anti relationship like. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And I think that happens whenever you put yourself on a pedestal. You're right. like, I am this, you know, I am the all knowing and I can give you advice. So I love the fact that you come from the perspective of, I'm just trying to figure it out. I'm exactly where you are. I'm just studying, I'm yeah. putting in my time. Yeah. So let's talk about what made you, what motivated you as a, as a man to want to get online and share this and start this conversation. I got tired of uh, struggling behind the scenes. You know, um, I mismanaged the heart of my ex-wife and I said, I do desire to be married again. And so I have to heal out loud. Mm -hmm. And so I said, I know I couldn't be just the only one. I couldn't be the only one trying to figure this thing out. So mm -hmm. I said, hey, I'm going to be vulnerable. I'm going to be what I wish was something that I saw. I wish I saw other men that were vulnerable and let us know that they didn't get it right the first time. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to be that which I desired and yeah. just healed publicly. Well, I like that, but I want to, I think that a big part of that is what made you, what created the Lateris that did mismanage. I love how you said that. Mismanage yeah. the, the heart, heart of a woman. Of your wo yeah. yeah. Fumbled, you fumbled the ball. I did. I in did. In the words of Trey Songz, yeah. you fumbled her heart. <laughs> but what led to that? Because I'm assuming you can you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm assuming that you didn't set out to hurt no. to hurt her. No. So how did you? What created the Lateris that did fumble? or mismanage her heart. Not understanding the value of marriage, not understanding that marriage is about sacrifice and marriage is about selflessness mm -hmm. instead of being selfish. And so um, when I got married at the age of 28, you know, I had this ideology of marriage, but didn't know what it really felt like when you were living that thing out. And so when things weren't uh, reciprocated to me in my marriage, I had this I felt like the best desire was to step outside and and get outside what I desired inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was you, what did you think? Because I I've, I've talked to so many men that say they their idea of marriage included the fact that there may be indiscretions. Like they never thought that that was something that that was off the table for them. Many of them thought that was should be off the table for their significant other. But a lot of men go into marriage with the understanding that this is something that I may do. Were you, did you feel like that? No, I always felt like uh, I used to hold myself up high, you know, and especially by, you know, where I come from, from a faith perspective as a Christian, I never, ever felt like that was okay. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, I've always gone a step further and reprimanded my, my brethren, mm -hmm. my, my, my <laughs> brothers who would step outside of their marriages uh, prior to me getting married. And I was like, why would you get married if you're going to cheat on your wife? Mm -hmm. And then I ended up finding myself, you know, the same as them. Yeah. So let's talk about what was going on in your in your mind at that point. Because at some point, if you go from someone who condemns that or believes it's wrong to someone that ends up in that situation themselves, there had to be a point where you were able to tell yourself, well, this is, it's okay for me to do that. Or it's, uh, this is not the same or, you know, what, so what was going on in your psychic at that point that made you believe that what you were doing was different than what you had condemned over the years? I felt like uh, my knees weren't met. And so it, I understood, I understood that if you 
and this is the first year of marriage. First year of marriage, uh, my wife wasn't the type that was very sexual. She felt like um, sex wasn't really necessary. Mm -hmm. But we never discussed that prior to marriage, which is one of the things I say people should have a conversation with. Mm -hmm. Ask, what do you think is a healthy frequency uh, with sex? Mm -hmm. And if someone says, oh, probably twice a week. And if you know your sex number, you got to mm -hmm. have it about six or seven times y'all already misaligned. Right. And unless y'all can come on the same page to for either y'all to sacrifice on some level, mm -hmm. then y'all gonna always have conversations and arguments around sex. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the things that from uh, at 28 years old, I didn't have the framework to even have that conversation. But it was interesting because I was watching an episode of Housewives of Atlanta mm -hmm. and, and, and Candy was talking about her and Todd was in the swimming pool, I will never forget it. And they were talking about how they had sex like multiple times a day. Mm -hmm. And I turned to my ex-wife, you know, we were married at the time, and I said, so what do you think, you know, is a healthy number? And she was like, I mean, I don't see how people can have sex every day, all day. And I said, but what would you say? Because at that time, we were married about seven years, okay. and she was okay with, our frequency was about once every 13 to 14 days, mm -hmm. you know? And I was like, this this, this don't seem like <laughs> God. This, this can't be the Holy Spirit, you know? So, so... But again, she always t she told me before we got married, don't think our marriage is going to be based on sex. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't understood, I didn't understand what that meant. Mm -hmm. And her, I was like, of course, it's not going to be based on sex. But in her mind, she already had a preconceived frequency that I felt like we should have uh, actually discussed. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this because I remember when I was when I was married the first time. I remember going to a marriage retreat, and the therapist told me, and the women because they were they separated us, and they said that to men. Sex is when a woman rejects her husband. It's not just about the sex. It really is an internal rejection. It, it affects so much more than just him wanting to get his, you know, his yeah. stuff off. So can you talk a little bit about? Because I don't think women understand just what that rejection does to a man. Yeah, you hear that all the time. That they say men need sex. Mm -hmm. We hear it all the time. Um, it's just a part of our, our our makeup. But when you tell a man no, and that's a person. First of all, you have to think you're not just some typical woman to him, mm -hmm. especially a, a man that decides to marry you. Mm -hmm. He is hard to get a man to marry you. And so if a man decides, listen. I'm about to lay it all out. You got to think about it. Before you, a man gets married, his groomsman is like, all right, man, you out the game. You know, you done left us with all the other women. He's like, all right, cool. And in his mind, he's saying, I want to be married to this one woman, and there's such value in this woman that I'm willing to leave all the other ones alone mm -hmm. to be with this one woman. Mm -hmm. Then he chooses you, and then you're not choosing him in return mm -hmm. by when he's finding himself vulnerable. You got to think about how hard it is for a man to be, like, trying to have sex with you, and then you like, quit, stop. He's like, stop. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. What part of the game is this? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so when he feels rejected in that, it's like you're totally telling him that he's not worth it. Wow. He's just not worth it. And you don't find value in him. You're not, um, a lot of men have a lot of sexual pride. Mm -hmm. So then at that point, you're telling him that you don't value his sexual powers. So it's like, well, why Why would you not want this great thing? Why wouldn't you want, why would you not want this great feeling that I'm about to give you? Mm -hmm. And so most of the time, a man's going to automatically step out at that point. Wow. And I think that's probably also why there's this idea that, um, Girls that are very sexual, I'm not going to use any terms because this is a family site, but a lot of times people think those girl, the, the girls that are very sexual, oh, think their sexuality, they win. They win. And they, it sounds like they win because they understand how powerful and how, how valuable that perspective is to a man. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's what I always say. Yeah. Those be winning mm -hmm. is because of the fact that, yeah, they, it's, it's very simple. Yeah. You know, when I was going through premarital uh, counseling, they talked about men need sex mm -hmm. and, and, and women want to feel safe. Yeah. And so if you just meet each other in those needs, you have already conquered the half the, the, the battles of marriage, just that simple. Yeah. But, but sometimes we'll be like, we operate in the selfishness. It's like, well, you don't make me feel safe. So I'm, I'm gonna withhold this. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, well, since you're doing that, I ain't finna make you feel. And it's like this battle instead of saying, let's operate as a team, let's operate as partnership and give each other's, uh, give each other our greatest needs. Mm -hmm. Well, that was one of the issues, uh, that lets you going through a divorce. And I love the fact that this 
podcast that you're done has kind of enabled you to grow and for people to be able to, to grow along with you yeah. and talk about that. So we're going to come back from break and we're going to talk about what you've learned about women. Because I think that if we learn about each other, the situation will be different. The fact that a lot of women don't know yeah. what that means to men is why I think a lot of women withhold sex. So we're going to learn more about what Lateris has learned about women specifically with Dear Future Wifey and all that and more when we come back. Stay tuned. This is Rolling Out. We'll be right back. Hey, rolling out Crystal Jordan, and we are back with more Reality Check right here talking about relationships with Lateris Whitfield from Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Now, I got to ask you, why did you choose to name the podcast Dear Future Wifey? Because you got women across the country thinking that you're talking to them. I know that there are women out there trying on veils and gowns, <laughs> <laughs> trying, yeah. to, trying to be your future wifey. Yeah, it gets a little difficult, um, but at the end of each podcast I write a letter to my future wifey okay. and so I always have to well my mindset is to keep my future wifey top of mind and so I named the podcast that because I'm doing all of this for her mm -hmm. you know I'm becoming a better man for her and so this journey that I'm documenting is is my greatest gift to her yeah okay so let's get into it what did you you started this podcast in 2020 and I mean, the reception has been amazing. I remember hearing about it and, and going and listening to what you were talking about and, and just seeing there were so many people. I mean, it grew really quickly. Yeah. What have you learned about women that you did not know when they started flooding your inbox <laughs> with comments, questions all down your thread? And they've become like you've become someone that probably is a student of understanding the way women think yeah. and the way that, so what, what are some of the biggest things that you've learned? One of the biggest things is that, uh, which is interesting is that women love sex as much as men. Absolutely. And a lot of times we always talk about men wanting sex so much, but I remember one of my, uh, first viral videos mm -hmm. got probably about 3 million views. And it was a video about, I said that I'm not concerned about a woman's body count. She mm -hmm. could have been with 25, 35 men, the version of her that I'll get, no man has ever gotten because I know how to cultivate that woman. Well, women were like, protect this man at all costs, <laughs> you know? Uh, and the, the reality of that was, is that women talk about, they enjoy having sex, but then they feel like they'll meet a guy that's like, how many men? Have you slept with and and feel as though she's lost her value because of her quote unquote body count? Mm -hmm. So to know that about uh, women, uh, one of the other videos that it went viral that um, really touched me was I was talking about the number one need for a woman is to feel safe. Mm -hmm. I said if you can make a woman feel safe, you can have her mind, her body, and her soul because she knows that you you will cover her and protect her. Mm -hmm. Well, that video was birthed out of me not making my wife feel safe. And so I did a follow-up video saying, now this is how I learned that. And I talk about this feather story when my wife came home with a feather one day and she was like, hey, it was the first year of marriage. She came home with a feather. She was like, hey, why don't you rub this on my body? And I was like, what is what is all this? You know, we finna rub, like what kind of foreplay is this? You know, and so she was wanting me to be delicate and just rub the feather. In my mind, I got frustrated because I was like, here's one more obstacle. This is one more hurdle to jump. It just didn't resonate to me that she wanted to make love to me instead of just have sex. Mm -hmm. And so, um, it took me all the way until 2022. Mm. It was January 2022. God brought that to my remembrance. And I was like, oh, my God, I was so selfish. Mm. I just and I and I talk about it being the feather story that God told me that, listen, you know, for your wife, she wants you to be gentle. She wants you to caress her. She doesn't want no wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Mm. You know, and even at that time, I never even, con you know, considered myself being like that, you know, but I never looked at the experience through her lens. Right. And so uh, that was one of the greatest takeaways I learned is to create safety for my wife. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is amazing that, 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 that men do not understand. <laughs> <laughs> I think we want the same things. We just yeah. want it packaged differently. Packaged right? differently. Now, let me ask you this because you mentioned safety and I'm a big, I, I really think that that's most women's number one need and maybe we don't articulate that correctly. Right. I believe that this social media conversation that we see a constant battle between men and women about money, right? Mm. And we think of money as the gold diggers versus the broke Negroes. <laughs> but really it's not that. Really I think that money and, and financial security work to make a woman feel safe. 
Do you see how that can, can relate to safety as well? I totally see how that correlates. And that's why I say, well, we have to challenge that ideology because I've spoken to women that have been married to millionaires and they still felt like princesses lock, mm -hmm. locked in a castle. Mm -hmm. And they felt like all oh, they, they had the maids, they had the butlers, they had the chefs, they had every designer shoe or, or bag that you can name, but they still felt empty. And so I, may, I want to make sure that we don't relegate men to a dollar amount because that's where, again, you may get exactly what you desire and you'll still come up short. Right. So I think that, that we need to understand what we're asking for and why we're asking for that. Right. right. So it's not that I'm asking you to just, well, some people may want a <laughs> yeah. lot of money thrown at them. Yeah. But I think a lot of women want to know. Are we going to be? A, I want to know how. Am I going to be okay? Yeah. If you look at like animals, when a when a when a animal gets ready to have a baby, she wants to nest and make sure that her babies will be protected. And I think that really correlates to the human experience because women want to know that my house is. Are we going to be okay? Yeah. Is someone going to come in and take this house? Yeah. Yeah. How are we going to? How are we going to manage? How are we going to be okay? Yeah. Right? Yeah, I believe that's a realistic need. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, we all want safety. Right. And so, and any good man will want to provide for his wife. Mm -hmm. And I just think that, you know, if we just do relationships right, if we meet the needs from a selfless standpoint, then we'll all win in the end. I agree. Now, because you do talk to a lot of women, I'm sure you've come up with some ideas of what some of us may be doing wrong, right? <laughs> so I bet you probably have a, an inkling of what some of us may be doing wrong um, in the dating process. So I'm wondering if you could maybe give our audience maybe three tips that women should be aware of when they are trying to be intentional with dating. Date. That's the first thing. <laughs> Sometimes you may meet a guy and you already put these unmet expectations. You seeing them, you like, this could be my husband. Mm -hmm. Nope. Fall back. Get to know him. Mm -hmm. Dating is data collection. Mm -hmm. Take your time, learn him, and vet him to see if that's somebody that you could actually see yourself spending the rest of your life with. Right. Uh, another thing is you have to... We have these these standards that we have. We have our type. Mm -hmm. Let's say our type. We say, I like this type of man. Right. And then I always venture to say, you dated that type for the last 15, 20 years. How's, <laughs> how's that been working out for you? Mm -hmm. You know, you said you want to be married. You said you want, you know, you want fidelity. Has that type been faithful to you? Mm -hmm. You know, whatever that type is. And so you got to get into the mentality and say, you know what, let me date outside of my, my box. One thing that I found is a lot of people, when I find that they were married, mm -hmm. they've have successful marriages because a lot of them dated outside their general type. Mm. You know, they'll be like, I normally wouldn't normally t talk to a guy like this, but this was the best experience I've ever had. Yeah. And so I'll just say those two things. If you can start off dating and just take it as a date, mm -hmm. not, not premarital counseling, <laughs> your first date, you're just dating him right. as data collection and divorce your type. Divorce your type. Because we do look at, we'll look at a picture of a man and be like, he's going to be my husband. We're going to have some cute babies. We're going to have some cute babies together. It's like, really? Yeah. That man could be crazy. And you, over time, you want to have babies with him. You want yeah. to procreate with this man. So vetting. Yes. Just really quickly. What is important when you're vetting a man? Asking the right questions. And those questions are what are of value to you. Mm -hmm. So um, you're non-negotiable. Ask. If, you, if he's a guy and... Having kids with that individual is very important, and he has three kids and don't take care of none of them. You know, you might want to ask that question. You want to, you might want to ask, when's the last time you saw your kids? Yeah. You know, yeah. if you're talking to him and you've talked to him for a whole month, and he has kids and he's never had his kids with him, you might want to, you might want to, yeah, it may be a red flag for you. Yeah, sure. uh, you need to ask him the importance of, of of his finances. You know, is he a type that he's gonna wear the latest and greatest shoes, and oh. he got you know the the latest drip? but he doesn't find the value in taking care of home, you know, you might want to ask that. And a lot of stuff you can just find by just watching and observing. And listening. Yeah, and listen. And then running. <laughs> you want to put the emphasis run. on run? Just I'm run. put the emphasis on run, sis. <laughs> if he got Balenciagas but no money in the bank, run, sis. All right. Well, thank you so much, Lateris, for joining us for this reality check. If you want to hear more from Lateris, he has great information. And I want to stay tuned because I'm hoping that we get a chance to see him actually meet his dear future wife, and we get a chance to tell her we saw this whole process Amen. and knew you were on your way. So please check out Lataris on Dear Future Wifey Podcast. And of course, come back and hang out with us right here on Reality Check. This is your girl, Crystal Jordan, with Rolling Out, and I will see you guys next time.